when my first AD on that movie, Elizabeth Lake Thomas, came to me with um, Just Swipe, a romantic comedy, yep. um, and said, I need help producing this, and uh, would you star in this for me? I'm going to direct it. And I said, sure. And then I realized, oh, I got to raise all the money and figure the whole thing out. Is that like executive producer that she wanted you to be? No, no. Well, I'm, I'm full on producer. You brought the money as well? You know, Part of when it. you're responsible, you're responsible. You're responsible. So yeah. I quickly went to work and raised some funds. And most importantly, I made the call to Jody Sweeten. Yep. Um, from Full House? From Full these? House and Fuller House. Yeah. Um, she became a much bigger star on, on Fuller House because that centered on her and Candace. Um, we shot it in eight days at the Sinatra Estates. And again, this was lockdown. This was before we had the vaccine. And so what I did was I rented out this estate and I said, here's what we're going to do. Is that in Palm Every, Springs? No, there, there, he has houses yeah, all over. Yeah. This was in Woodland Hills. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so we made this film. And then I thought, well, now I've made two during the pandemic. I started working on the script with Kelly Price for Curse of Wolf Mountain. He had an idea. He said, I need your help. I helped him with the script. And uh, and he ended up writing a draft that we could shoot. Um, we shot two days in my house and six days on a mountain in Castaic sure. um, near Magic Mountain. It's called The Curse of Wolf Mountain, Curse which came out May 9th. Yeah. It stars Danny Trejo, Tobin Bell from all the Saw movies. Wow. Um, and uh, of course, myself. You direct it and started it. You want Directed to start it. it? Yes. Played a key character in it, and somehow shot a movie in eight days on time. Again, eight um, days. I mean, that I'll never do again. That that was insanity. Twelve days is bad enough. You really have days. to have a good cast that can do it in what one well, take, two takes. And to be honest, you got to know what you're doing because basically, like, you go here, you go there, you run your lines, you're on the wrong set. I need wardrobe, and he's got the wrong clothes on. <laughs> and it's like, and roll camera, wow. and it's like that. And then I go, great. How am I doing? You're 20 minutes behind. And then the funny thing is, we were, we shot day for night. Oh yeah, which was so we got to sleep. This is my genius idea. Yeah. When they go, Dave, can't afford the lights. We can't afford the generators. We can't, we don't have the time to move it all around the mountain. And I said, I have the solution. We'll go day for night. No problem. Very, very difficult. So you're constantly running away from the sun. It's, it's counterintuitive. You know, it was an experiment yeah. for all of us. Yeah. You know, none of us had done it before. So right. you know, there's no one person. It's your third film. Yeah. You know, we did it. And I thought we, we made a really fun, low budget horror film. Yeah. You know, I killed 10 people in the movie. And it's great. That, it's hard enough to do the rom-com <laughs> in a house. Right. Right. that we did in eight days. Right. That's much, much easier yes. than doing stunts, practical effects, and there's visual effects. And yes, this was a long post-production, cleaning it up in post. This is the problem when you rush and you go, oh, we'll deal with everything in post. Well, then you have a very long post. Yeah. You know, and what could be like a three-month post, it turns into a year post. Wow. You know, we had to remove things that shouldn't have been there. <laughs> yeah. My favorite is in a Christmas letter, one of the kids forgot to take her mask off because it was back in the days. Oh, yeah, yeah, the mask. COVID mask, yes. That's where the masks between every shot. And so I had him remove the mask. And then, of course, a chunk of the face is missing. And then he had to put the face back in. Oh. Unfortunately, the one master shot, I didn't have more coverage. I didn't have another shot without the mask. So we fixed it in the coverage, but we moved on from the master shot oh, before we figured out she had a mask on. So once, uh, again, once you remove something, yes. then you have to put it back. And so he rebuilt her face. And, oh my uh, God. Anyway, really amazing job that he did on that. I can imagine. That's the movie magic of making this stuff. And also because you were, had the ability to write, because you were the writer, I got to figure out how to fix this. Oh, we'll just add this scene or a voiceover or the DJ or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? That's great. Like, subscribe, comment. Did you plan on wanting to do something with me? He goes, I don't know, maybe. I go, what do you mean, maybe? Like, let's make a company. So we made a company. Wow. And it's called Latigo Films. Latigo. In October, it'll be two years. We've made 11 movies together. <laughs> My God. In less than two years. It's unfathomable. I know. In fairness, I will say this. I didn't run every show from beginning to end. Right. Just most of them. <laughs> um, all six last year, yes. Um, in fact, one, I was just a producer for Hire on Candy Flip. I came in, I crewed up for them. I, um, you know, I helped them have the right team in place to run the show with me. And um, and then I shot second unit. That's the thing. That's oh, yeah. another advantage to me as a producer is I generally am shooting the second camera that's how you make 12 days work on a film because oh. think about it if i'm one camera right all day every day and i get 12 days in that's going to be tough but if i'm two cameras in a sense it's like 24 days yeah right? just yeah. getting double the coverage wow. if you're using that camera all the time and when i have two cameras i'm using that camera all the time because if i see it sitting there Right. I'm grabbing the, you know, the sheet from the director that I've gone through and I say, look, I'm going to knock this shot off. I'm going to knock this shot off. Well, I'm going to knock off this, this and that. And <laughs> I'll take my little unit, my B unit, and we'll knock this stuff off. And sometimes I shot entire scenes and even scenes I was in. 
Um, yeah, which, you won the stars of it. It's another the writer, one I, producer, I wrote, yeah. won the stars of that movie. That's right. I do my research. That's right. <laughs> we made a movie this year called Not Without Hope, directed by the brilliant and written by the brilliant Joe Carnahan. Yes. Um, who did a movie called The Gray with Liam Neeson. Yep. Did like $100 million in box office or close to. So I looked at the script and I looked at what they had in Malta and I saw that there was something amazing. It's a true life story, by the way, about the four football players who went fishing off the coast of Florida in 2009. And they dropped the anchor and they knew a storm was coming, like right. a hurricane. And they're like, nah, no problem. We'll fish. We'll get out of here long before the storm comes. Can't get the anchor up. And they're pulling and they're pulling and four huge, you know, big football wow. guys. Colin Smith had won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay. Wow. 37, I believe. Anyway, so then they have this really clever idea and say, hit the gas. Let's see if that works. And they hit the gas and the whole boat flips over. Now they're in 60 degree water. There's sharks. There's, oh my God. And then the rain comes and the wind and the hurricane. And then I made a call to uh, my agent at CAA and uh, said, I need a little help. I want to grab Josh Dumel to yep. play the Coast Guard captain who kind of puts the whole rescue effort together. And I had worked with Josh before on a film called Bandit. Yep. Um, in fact, I'd had a nice conversation with him at the uh, premiere party and said, you know, I'm, I'm going to send you something because I want to work with you. And reached out to his manager, Carabino, uh, but mostly Lori Bartlett at, uh, at CAA. And um, we got it done in a few days, got him out to Malta and made an unbelievable movie. So oh, that's great. You know, we have a major position in this. I have a major credit in this as a producer, as does my partner, Bob Daly. Yep. And, um, and we're beyond excited. Uh, I think this is going to be a huge movie. I think it's going to be a box office movie. Yeah. I think it's going to hit the faith-based world, you know, because oh, wow. how did this one person survive? I'm sorry to give it away, but if it's a true story. That's yeah, true there, story. People, people know, know yeah. it. Um, how did he survive and the other ones didn't? All in, you know, 20-something-year-olds in great shape. Wow. You know, I think faith played into it. And yeah. Zachary Levi, who yes. the guy, Shazam. is a faith-based guy. So, yep. um, so I like that angle. So we're looking at, at that as part of, you know, our marketing efforts, because I feel like it speaks to that community a lot, and, and, and it should. So now your price range of your movies are anywhere from like a million to 30 million. That's right. And growing. And you have funds ready for the smaller movies and you you have go-to people for the larger movies? I mean, every movie is its own. It's almost like a startup company, if, if any of you can relate to what that's like. Okay, let's go to our usual pack of investors sure. that invested in the last startup. Yeah. You know, and then let's put our package together and explain why you should invest in this product and how it's going to make money yep. and what the risks are and what the potential rewards are. Yeah. And we have to do that on every single film. Like, subscribe, comment, 